Folks, I'm really pleased to finally be able to announce to you that this product is ready for you to go buy. <laughs> this uh, this is the Fury F3 flight controller, and you may know it by its other name. Originally, it was the Copter Control board. Uh, it was announced on RC Groups. Uh, it was You could probably call it a hobby project. A guy was literally hand-soldering every single one of them. If you asked for one, he would hand-solder it. And, uh, and send you one. And now it is a commercial product that you can buy from Two Dog RC, the Fury F3. Uh, and this is a heck of a board. Uh, look, at, look at the features it's got. It's got the SPI gyro, so you can run at eight kilohertz. It's got the MPU 6000, which is, I think it's the gold standard for, uh, for quadcopter multi-rotor gyro chips. Uh, it's got an onboard SD card. <laughs> and, and so those are some of the main features that I like to see in a flight controller, uh, the onboard SD card, if you do black box logging, is just a lifesaver. No fussing with UARTs and, and baud rates and all that nonsense. It's just right there. And the closest board to this, I think, that's on the market right now is probably... Hello. Hi there. Hi there. I have to mute notifications on my cat. Hi there. Hi dear, hi dear, hi dear. Oh, hello. Okay, but I'm recording right now. But I'm recording right now. You got to go. You got to go. Ah, oh no, oh no. We'll go that way. Okay, bye bye. <clears throat> I think the closest board uh, to this on the market right now is probably the SP3 Evo. Uh, but the SP3 Evo has the 9250 gyro, which some people would say is is less ideal than the uh, MPU 6000. And I'm also, I'm just a really big fan of the layout of this board. I love to see a board where the designer has clearly put a lot of thought in the layout. Let's just take a look. And I actually, saw, I'm, I'm putting this on my QAVR right now. Uh, literally just a couple hours ago, I was working on it. And so I've got to sort of play with the board layout. And if you take a look here, we've got the edge launch pins, which you're probably not going to put pins on this, but you could put edge launch pins, similar to the KISS and the Luminaire Lux. So you've got the low profile build here. If you're direct soldering, as I usually do these days, these, these flat edge launch pads are so much better than through holes. I think uh, I seldom put a wire through a through hole. Through holes are really intended, I think, for pins, uh, header pins more so than wires, although obviously you can put a wire through them. The problem with putting a wire through a through hole is that if you have to desolder it and then getting the wire back through is kind of a pain in the butt. So I always just put some solder on the hole and lay the wire on top of the hole and solder it down as if it was one of these exact pads. But these pads are a little bit longer and a little bit bigger than a through hole and so they're a little easier to solder to. So I think for direct soldering, this kind of uh, pad is, is where you really wanna be. Here we're looking at the underside of the board and we've got the uh, UART 3 TXRX 5 volt ground in the standard order. So if you were going to plug in a four pin header, you would be able to just plug it right in. Very smart. I was really, this is just the little touches that show you that the designer really was thinking. Look what we got here. We've got a three pin servo header if you're going to use UART 3 for SBUS. Now, obviously, you could. If you're going to direct solder, you could just use these pads as well. It doesn't really matter. But if you want to put a three-pin servo header on there and use an actual servo wire, you certainly can. And it's very thoughtful for them to, to put that there. We've got the buzzer pads here. And if you're interested, you could just put your buzzer right there on the edge of the board and direct solder it. And it would probably be strong enough to not have any issues as long as it didn't get whacked by anything. We've got a 3.3 volt output here, although there is also a separate spectrum satellite header. But if you need 3.3 volts for some kind of sensor or something, you can have it. Here's our current and RSSI sensor. And then these are the motor headers here. The ground is on the underside. The signal is on the top. And if we go over and take a look at the top of the board, here's the top of the board. Here's your spectrum satellite header right here. No actual plug, but you can direct solder. I'm sure you're not afraid of that. Here's your motor headers. Here's your PPM input. Uh, and here's your UART1 and UART2. Joshua from the future here. I just want to add a couple things that I thought of after I shot this content, but before I edited it. And one of the things I did in that interim was I finished installing this board on my QAVR, so I have just a little bit of firsthand experience with it. One of the things that I forgot to mention when I first recorded this voiceover is uh, th this board does not have a bootloader button, which is a mark against it. I really prefer a bootloader button. 
but this board does have the next best thing to a bootloader button. It doesn't have those annoying pads that you have to either solder a wire to or solder a solder jumper. You can't just hold a little clip up against those pads. It just never seems to work. And you're trying to hold the clip while you plug in the USB. It's a pain in the ass. Uh, so what it does have is it has bootloader uh, through holes. So you can take a wire, you can stick it through the through holes, and then you, it's a lot easier to sort of hold it in place while you're then plugging in the USB. And, and what I did actually on my board was I actually soldered two uh, through hole pins in so that if I need to, I can just kind of stick a screwdriver in it and bridge those pins and put the board easily into bootloader mode. So I find that it's not ideal, but it's acceptable. The other thing that I discovered about this board while I was installing it on my copter is it does not appear to power the receiver from USB. And this, on a board that made so many right decisions, this seems to be a really major oversight. Uh, that's such a convenient feature for when you're setting up your copter. You can check your arming switch that it works. You can check all, you can check your channels. And at no point do you have to plug in a LiPo and risk all the things you risk when you plug a LiPo in on the bench. It, that is one of the best features that flight controllers have come up with in the last few months uh, is the ability to power the receiver over USB. And at least on my copter, it doesn't seem to be working. Uh, I assume that's a feature of the board, although if I'm wrong about that and either there's something wrong with my receiver or my board, I'm sure that, uh, that Two Dog will jump in and correct immediately in the comments, and I'll make sure to correct that as well. But um, that, I think, is the only thing I would say about this board that is a real like like complaint that I have. So there you go. One thing that some of you will not like about this board is that it does not have an onboard voltage regulator. Now that's not a problem for me because I like to rely on my PDB for voltage regulation. Anyway, there you go. Fury F3 board available now from Two Dog RC. I'm very happy to announce it. And if that sounds like something you're interested in, go pick it up. Happy flying.